Hi guys, it's Arit here. Last week I talked about what it is that we're doing in terms of helping artists and creative entrepreneurs, why we're even creating videos like this one and really speaking to you on a daily basis through our videos. And this week I wanted to touch upon one of those points. So in that last video, which by the way, I'll put the link down in the description below if you haven't watched part one. Last week I touched upon a point saying that the, the road to being an artist or a creative entrepreneur or someone who's building a project or a business that you're truly passionate about is unpaved. It's unpaved, it's uncertain, and it's rocky, right? It's scary. So what constitutes you calling yourself a creative entrepreneur or an artist? And it all starts with the decision. So I'm gonna go deeper into that in this video because I really want you to know that you can be whoever the heck you want to be and it's up to you to decide who that person is so if you are in a place right now where you don't feel authentic or you feel like you can be better you can do better then really write out write physically write out with a pen and paper who it is that you want to be. What would you look like? How would you feel on a day-to-day -day basis? What would you be doing every day? And once you really start to visualize that and get an, a deeper understanding, you identif you're basically identifying with that person that you wanna be. And it's really that simple. You know, we, we have technology nowadays to to put our, ourselves out there and we can put whoever we want out there. Now don't confuse this with being inauthentic or fake or anything like that. I'm just saying that if you are someone who wants to help a particular uh, crowd or audience, for example, you want to help people become healthier, let's just say, then then share your thoughts with others on how you are currently doing that. And by virtue, you're currently doing that, you are stepping into that person who you want to be. There used to be gatekeepers between you and who you want to be, but there aren't any more. There are no authorities to tell you that, oh, you can't be an artist. You can't be a photographer. You can't be a writer. Who are you to say that? There's no, 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 none of that anymore. I mean, they still do exist, but you don't have to, you're not forced into to dealing with those authorities or with those gatekeepers. And you have complete access to a world of knowledge that is at your fingertips. So if you wanna be a musician, let's say, then you can go study and practice music. You can do that. Nobody is stopping you. There are no gatekeepers or authorities saying you can't. It's up to you to make that first step. So you can either get a formal or informal education on music, meaning formal meaning you are studying through a post-secondary institution on learning more about music theory and that sort of thing, or informal, searching specifically what you want to learn about music, about singing, maybe about creating music, and implementing that. There is nothing stopping you except yourself. So you are your own obstacle. Most of the time, you are your own obstacle between where you are now and where you want to be. You know, just to give you an example, for me, I never, I never had any formal education in music. I just knew that it was something that I really, really loved and I was so passionate about it. So I took that first step by starting to take music lessons or singing lessons. And I did that every single week. And from that, I got to meet other people who introduced me to, into how to make my first album and to go on tour. So for me, I had that informal path of education by learning more about music from singing teachers, also by going into choirs and, um, and vocal collectives where I'd learn more about harmonies and then I also got introduced to someone who taught me more about breathing techniques and all this kind of stuff. So the, the education, 
the curriculum for for my art actually unfolded on its own and it can do the same thing for you because once you start something it's it's energy and you're putting that energy out into the universe and the more you put in the more you get so as long as you're courageous enough to make that first step to say this is who I want to be and to say this is what I want to do then you can start asking yourself those questions to to get the answers that you seek questions like who do I really want to be what is the first step towards me becoming that person? What knowledge do I need to adopt? What resources should I seek out? Those questions are extremely valuable for you because they will prompt the answers and they will come into your world where you can start taking action on those answers and seeking out the knowledge that you need. It's not just knowledge, right? It's also practice. So you also have to not only be an avid learner, but you also have to practice what you're learning, right? Applied knowledge is power. Just whatever you do, don't be paralyzed by fear or doubt and procrastinate and not do anything. If you really have something in your heart that you want to work towards, then go do it. Sometimes the problem is, is that we're all worried to make mistakes, but in fact, making mistakes is what moves you forward. That's way better than just sitting and doing nothing. So what do you guys think? Please let me know in the comments down below. Do you agree with me? Do you have any extra thoughts or valuable insights to add to this conversation? I would really love to hear from you. Leave those with me in the comments down below this video. And if you found this video really helpful, please share it with someone else who really needs to hear this message. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Back from the dead.